Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. I'm Hazel. I was born in 1890 in Aspen, Colorado to a Civil War veteran named Lewis Hunkins and Anne Whittington, a young English lady. My mom was his second wife. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. My father was from East Haverhill, Massachusetts. He was born in, the 18, in 1840, November the 9th, I believe. At the age of 21, he enlisted into the 17th Massachusetts and he served bravely our country until the end of that rebellion, that horrible rebellion we had here in our United States. You might know it as the Civil War. In the spring of 1882, he moved out west to Aspen, Colorado, entering into business there, making watches and jewelry. He had been in that trade before he came out west. He married my mom in 1855, and I was born in 1890. They removed from Billings a couple years after I was born and they went to Billings, Montana. He engaged in that same business there in Billings and he was very successful. However, one day he was struck ill. Oh, it was a sad day. Oh my golly. He had pneumonia, they said. And back then, they didn't have the kind of medicines we have now. They didn't have the penicillins that we have now to help with that. And he died two days after he became ill. I was only 16. My father leaves behind my mother, my half-brother, my half-sister, and myself. We're living here in Billings still. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. Now I have to remind myself, there were fun times, fun stories to remember. One of them was after my brother Carl came and lived with us, he and dad liked to go hunting and they went out and set some traps. And then occasionally they, of course, go back and look to see if there's anything caught in the traps. And they had put down some great big traps this time. They were hoping for something big, maybe like a bear. So they left them there. And then that was the fall, I think. And then the snow came and they didn't get back out there to those traps. And so they decided it was time. The weather let up a little bit and they went back out to check on those traps and they found where they had put them. The traps were gone. There were no traps around. However, it looked like there had been a struggle. So they thought maybe they did have an animal. So what they did is they took a two mile radius, three mile radius, something like that, and they searched all around for the animal that was caught by that trap. Now, some of you might think that's hard in our day. However, back then, that was something folks did. And they used the skin, they ate the meat. It's just kind of how it was back then. Um, so they were a little discouraged because they could not find the animal. So uh, they're walking down and they came up on a sweet gum tree. And my brother Carl said, I need some gum. You know, if you go to a sweet gum tree and you cut it just right, you can, uh, you can have some gum. So he crawled up in that tree and uh, was getting his gum. So my father laid his rifle back against the tree. And um, he leaned up against that tree. And he's just looking around, you know, just kind of wasting time. Oh, his his rifle was a Winchester, I think. That's kind of what I craw recall. And he looked up in the tree nearest him, just, you know, right across from him. And he looked up and he's like, oh my, oh my, I found our animal. Yes, I did. 
the bear was in the tree. It was almost gone. So he took out his Winchester and shot the bear. The bear fell down to another limb, but the um, bear went on one side, most of him, and the traps went on the other side. So here we are up in the air is dangling the bear and the traps. So now, what were we to do? You know, what was dad to do? I'm telling it like I was there, but I'm just telling dad's and Carl's story. It's 20 feet above the ground and we can't get that. We can't go up there and do anything. So we walked for two, they walked for two miles and they got an ax and they came back and they cut down that tree. And then they drug that bear home. And like I said, we used up what we could of the bear for food and, and the skin. And then dad had the head mounted and put it into um, a piece where he could have it at his shop. He made a rug also. He had a great time in his watchmaking shop uh, showing, showing that piece off. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. So in 1903, I was considered the most popular and the second smartest and the third most conceited out of all my classmates. However, there weren't too many. This was actually recorded in the newspaper. I was just a normal gal growing up with dreams. In 1908, another newspaper article came out. I like going through and reflecting in my old newspaper articles in this box I have here. I was the valedictorian of my class and was active in both debate and basketball. That article's right. I remember those things. Just a normal girl growing up with dreams. In 1913, I received a degree in chemistry from Vassar College. Just a normal girl with dreams. However, not many people in my generation were able to do that. I was able to study, study further as a student research assistant at the University of Missouri. I dreamed of becoming a chemist. Just a normal girl with dreams, but no company wanted a woman. Just a girl with dreams. Dreams of a different way. My mother became ill and I decided to go home and help her. After that, I continued to search for a job as a chemist. Do you know I've tried 20 companies and more? And they needed a chemist. They said they needed chemists. That wasn't the problem. The problem was they didn't want to hire a woman. Women weren't qualified, they said. Not for a chemist's job. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams. Until I had so many no's. Until I was discriminated against time and time again. I did find a job and taught school a little bit. But I was pondering what was to come next. What was to come of us women? When were we going to get more rights? And I, I heard of a lady named Alice Paul. And I decided to go to some of her speeches. And she talked to me. I was just a normal gal growing up with dreams until... And Alice convinced me to travel the country to campaign for the vote against Wilson. And I did just that in 1916. I organized the National Women's Party for three years by assisting state organizers and acting as secretary. Because of my strong beliefs, I was one of the first volunteers 
Uh, just wait till you find out for what. Just a normal gal with dreams until, yes, I was about to tell you, I was one of the first volunteers to chain myself to the White House fence. That was 1917. Those days were so hard, though. Cold weather, bad company. Those counter-protesters, they would yell at us continuously. They would tear our banners down. Despite these setbacks, I remained determined for the cause. Sharing with my mother, she shared with my, my cause. She, I tried to think about how she must be feeling when they were writing about me, but she was for our cause. If there's anything that makes my blood boil, it would be to be told by a great, big, fat, pompous, sloppy, dirty, dishonest politician that women weren't capable of voting. They didn't know how to vote correctly. And in the same breath, with a smirk, he'd do, he said he would do anything for the ladies. Just a normal girl growing up with dreams until due to the mili my, milit my militant involvement, I was arrested several times, including August 1918, when I was arrested and put in jail for 15 days for participating in the Lafayette protest. The authorities arrested suffragettes that were picketing, even though it was the counter-protesters that had begun that ridiculous destroying of signs. Just a normal gal growing up with dreams until...